Well, today's a day to plant our garden, although it seems like we ought to be plowing snow or something, but we're gonna plant garden. It's dry enough out here. This has gotta be the most unique soil I have ever seen. It just makes really small chunks. I mean, I grind it and grind it. It never turns into powder. Last season, I thought maybe that it didn't work up well because I mishandled it, right? We worked it too wet. So this year, I've waited several extra days. It was probably dry enough to work last week, but I wanted to make sure that I waited long enough because it's just odd like this. I could get out and disc it first since it's been plowed, but what I'm going to try to do is till it, but till it not too deep because even though it's dry enough on top, this, this soil holds moisture right under the surface and it'll actually be pretty wet on down there. So I'm going to try to till it shallow. Uh, that's going to be hard for me. Uh, those skids on the end of the tiller, they don't, you know, they're not perfect at holding it up. So I'll have to use the three point hitch to try to hold it up and just take a little bit of uh, the surface on. Oh, the cats are coming out to check us out. Yeah. So I think I'll go get Johnny too. I'll till it once. Then we'll spread a little fertilizer on it and I'll till it again. Then we'll get started planting. Mary, stop. It's gonna get right under it. These rear stabilizers are loose, so they're allowing the tiller to dance all over everywhere. I had them loose for another attachment that I recently had on here. It's hard for me to till without tilling really deep. It just looks better when it's tilled really deep. I, I still want to go over it this first time, limiting how deep I go. It just doesn't leave it as nice. I'm wondering if maybe the second trip it will, it will look nicer. I'm just afraid to get down in there too far and dig up that wet muck. So I'm, I'm trying to learn to work with this dirt the way it ought to be worked with. And that's how I see the farmers work. They don't work it very deep in the spring. So I'm trying. It's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. This is the medium duty tiller from Monroe Trough Line. If you remember, I showed you some details of my King Cutter tiller just a couple weeks ago. So after I did that, I took a closer look at this tiller just to see if it was built any tougher or any better than the King Cutter. First, the case is a lot thicker. So those rock divots that you saw in the King Cutter, I'm not sure they'll show through on this particular tiller. Secondly, I showed you a seal that was leaking. Well, on this particular tiller, all of that seal is concealed. There's no way for stuff to get in there and wrap around it. I specifically looked for that because a commenter had mentioned that that was one of his key items in a tiller purchase. It's taken me a long time to begin to be able to spot the differences in tillers. And while tiller rule number one still applies, I can definitely see that this particular tiller is a lot tougher than that king cutter I've got. Yeah, at this point, you can see that I've given up on tilling this shallow. I just socked it in like normal. Okay, so much for that. I guess you can't teach an old dog new tricks. At least when it comes to me and this tiller, or any tiller. When I tried to set it really shallow, such that the three-point hitch held it up. It was not really floating at all uh, on its skids. It just, it went up and down like this really bad and it just left waves in the 
uh, ground. And I've seen that with my other tiller as well, so it's, it's not unique to this tiller. I really saw no choice other than just let it down on its skids and let it float. That's the bad news. The good news is waiting until the garden gut dryer actually worked here because it worked really well even though I went the normal depth that I would typically till. Now, I don't know if you noticed that, Christy. It, it, it looks really good. It looks ready to plant. Yeah. And last year we never got out here when it felt like it was ready to plant. I mean, even up into June when we were planting uh, the last bit of sweet corn that we planted, it, it was always wet. Uh, we just couldn't, I guess I didn't have the patience to wait for it to dry and it was an incredibly wet year last year. So I'm going to put some fertilizer in the buggy. I wanted to do some tilling first because I didn't want to have to go over the with the gator. So we'll put fertilizer on now and then we'll till one more time and then we'll plant. When I first used this spreader on Brian's lawn last week, I showed you how I had it running at 100% for the spinning speed. I'm running down in the 60s for this so it doesn't throw it quite so far. I'm going to spread at a much higher rate for this garden. So I put 80 pounds of this 12-12-12 in the spreader. We got just a little more in there. I guess I'll just spread back and forth until I get it spread out, but I think we've got the, the bulk of it the way we want it. That'll be all the fertilizer we do pre-plant. We'll probably put some more nitrogen on a little bit later. I always try to do that. I'm tempted to go get the nitrogen and put it on now though and just be done. Farmers wait, wait right? Well, some farmers put it on before pre-plant and some farmers side dress it along the side. Maybe we'll just put it on afterwards. Okay, we'll spread the rest of this out and scatter it wherever it ends up. Do you have some passengers? Yep. They're not too sure about it. I think Martha's gonna bail out. Looks like it. Come on, Martha. Come on up here and see me. You ready to plant some sweet corn, Martha? You've never seen that before. Neither of you have. Okay, Martha. I got to get moved. You're getting to where you hear the fuel pump start. Okay, this year we're going to plant two separate varieties, two separate hybrids of sweet corn. One of them is the SV9010SA that we planted last year. We absolutely loved it. So you might ask, well, why are you gonna plant anything different? Well, we just wanna try something different. Why not? There's a lot of different hybrids. We thought we'd try something different. This one is called Pursuit. Uh, it's by Syngenta. Now we get all of our sweet corn seed from ForTheGrower.com, the number four, thegrower.com. They have Roundup Ready sweet corn seed. They have uh, uh, traditional sweet corn seed, non-GMO. You, you can get whatever you would like. We choose to plant Roundup Ready seed because, well, it's easier for us, and quite frankly, that's what we're going to do. No use commenting on that in the comments section because you can do whatever you want in your garden. We'll do what we want in ours. But that's what we're going to use. This is called Pursuit. It's triple sweet, whereas the SV9010SA is super sweet. I think we'll do about six rows here to start, Christy, and we'll hold off on the super sweet variety, the SV9010, until the next planting. And that way they won't cross-pollinate too much because they'll be in different times. Sounds good. I'll pour enough of this in here, what I think to do, about six rows, and we'll get on. This seed is blue. Now that seed cup way down in there is really all the only place we need seed. We don't need any up here in the box. So I'll make sure that all that is down inside the seed cup. Now obviously this planter is made for big time planting, you know, acre after acre. So if my dad were using this, he would have this box totally full of seed, but we don't need very much. I imagine that's enough for six short rows like what we're gonna plant. I see a seed right here at the end. It's pretty deep. Did you change the setting from last year? No, I didn't change the setting from last year, but the soil is so much more workable this year that I think it's going deeper. I think I should take it out a little bit. I think it's a little too deep. The soil's working so nicely. 
Um, you don't need this nice a soil condition for this good quality planter to, print, to plant, but it's really nice when the soil does work this nice. I'll take it up a couple notches here. So that's one on each side. You can go, like for instance, you can go sideways here to get a half a notch or whatever. Yeah. So this would be a, a whole notch, I believe is how dad would describe that. Yeah, you can see a kernel in here. Yeah, so you see how the uh, V discs have made a, a little V trench there, and then the corn is in the trench. Those press wheels on the side here are pressing the crack shut. So it puts some nice pressure along the sides, but yet it leaves a, a place in the middle where the corn can come through without an enormous amount of pressure on it. Let me look in here. Oh yeah, we've done three rows. We still got plenty of corn showing up here. So let's do three more. Guys, there is a couple things I want to mention uh, specifically about this planter. I'm sure it's running through your head. Why does this guy have this fancy planter to plant this little amount of sweet corn? Yeah, it is overkill. It's overkill by far for what we're planting here. So why do I have it? I have it for a couple reasons. Number one, I want to show what a real planter can do. This is the same machine that my dad uses, a 12 row version of this. Um, on his farm still today. Now he bought his in 1994. It's still being used today. Uh, Randall uses a different one. They have another planter and it's a little fancier. Uh, but, but dad uses one just like this. And so, and that leads into the second reason. I wanted to have a little tie back to the farm. This just feels fun to me. This planter is just like my daddy used, right? So allow me a little bit of flexibility on this. Now let's say you are planting a little more sweet corn and you would like to have a planter like this. We got this at J.O. Harris Sales. It's in Illinois. They'll ship the planters anywhere. I haven't spoken with them this year. I'm not sure how much they're charging this year. Uh, last year was about $2,500. Probably the most common question I get is what is your row width and how close are your kernels to each other? For row width, we go about 36 inches. Uh, as you can see, I didn't use any marker or anything, but I drive the tractor right back in the same track that we came from. The tractor track width is centered on 36 inches. So that's the row width. Now, this planter has a complete transmission just like uh, the original John Deere planter that dad uses at home. And so you adjust the, the driver and driven sprockets to get the population that you want. Now they don't talk about it in how far apart are the kernels, they talk about how many kernels per acre that you're planting. So we've got it set so that it plants 26,700 kernels per acre on 36 inch row spacing. And so that's all adjusted here. You can calculate that what that row spacing turns out to be. Believe it or not, it's not that hard. There may even be a calculator online to do it, but I didn't pay attention to that too much. It's, but I suspect it's somewhere in the five, six, seven inch range. I don't know for sure. Christy, just think in 75 days. That's a long time. 70, oh, come on, it's not that long. We'll probably still be quarantined then. Oh, I hope not. In 75 days, we'll be pulling. <laughs> Mary's chasing the neighbor's chickens. Oh no. Mary, come here. Kitty, kitty. You don't need to bother those chickens, come on. No, you can't go anywhere. Hey, just think, 75 days from now? Yay, corn, it's sweet gonna be corn. Standing right up here and we're gonna be shucking off those Yum. nice, luscious ears of corn. Mary, do not go back over there. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor time, time with Tim. Tim.
Don't turn it off, Martha. I'm gonna eat the corn. Did that once. Wants to eat my finger, I think. What, what do why cats want to eat your finger? And I mean, he doesn't bite hard. He just, he just wants to bite a little bit. See? Maybe he can taste that cheeseburger you had for lunch. <laughs> hey, it's my birthday. I can have a cheeseburger on my birthday, can't I? Sure.